Hey, Western Oklahoma schools, listen up. How would you like to win a $5,000 interactive smart display for your school? Thanks to video reality and audio video business in Oklahoma City, you could be awarded one. Here's how. From now through February 28th, anyone can text in one time per day through the entire promotion. The winner will be announced during our live coverage on the ParagonTV.com and Cool 94's coverage of the Saturday, March 2nd Class A and B Basketball Championships. Here's how to participate. The text line number is 580-225-960. And in the text, simply type in the one-word name of the school you choose to support. We are so proud to partner with Video Reality that through their gracious gift in this promotion, some lucky school will be awarded a $5,000 interactive smart display. Remember, send a text to 580-225-9697. Type in your school's name. It can only be one word. And send it. Limit is one vote per day per phone number. Good luck. Video Reality, your audio, video, and control experts. Throw balls far. You want good words? Data language. Talk real sports with a real man. Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. And now here's the be all, end all, know it all of high school, college, and pro sports. Aaron Skinny Calc with the Skinny on Sports. We're talking about practice, man. I'm the MVP. Good Monday morning out there, Western Oklahoma. Welcome to the Skinny on Sports right here on 98.1 FM, the Sports Animal. Glad to be along for the next hour. Glad you're along for the next hour. We got all kinds of things that we can discuss. Thunder. Eh. First kind of little blip on the radar screen, right, over the weekend. The couple of losses, what, Friday to Atlanta. I guess that was Thursday to Atlanta. Maybe Wednesday. Wednesday. We, we saw that one coming with the schedule but then man down 32 in the third quarter to Brooklyn fought back but not enough so the Thunder riding a two-game losing streak against some teams that probably thought they could beat but they didn't now not a must win because we're still not even halfway through the season but it's a get right game tonight in Washington against the lowly Wizards so this is one they need to get just Right the ship, get back to where you need to be, right? And uh, we can talk about the Thunder. NFL, regular season over. Week 18 had some craziness. Did you see what happened in New Orleans? The the running up the score? or Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then the aftermath, Jameis. Jameis, uh, he didn't have much remorse. <laughs> yeah. Coach didn't like it, but, you know, the team wanted it, so that we went ahead and did it. I, I, at the handshake at the end, I saw the highlights of that. I think I think the coach was kind of going, what else? I'm going to get fired, so yeah, he I'm went, going out yeah, with Ar- the blaze of glory. Arthur Smith went crazy. It yeah. is Black Monday as well yep. uh, for NFL coaches. I know, what, three for sure? Has there been three? Rivera. Rivera Smith. Smith. There was one more I thought that came down pretty dang early. Well, Carolina fired their GM, maybe not the coach yet, because they've already fired their coach. Well, Carolina fired a coach in the middle of the season. The Chargers fired their coach in the middle of the season. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of, Uh, some of those that have already happened uh, before today. But I'm sure there will be more Oh yeah, before the end. Uh, You know, there's always – It just feels like if you don't make the playoffs – you need to be on the edge of your you seat. You get like a it, couple it kinda, of years. Yeah. It feels that way. Like if, if it's like, okay, we hired you two years ago, you still haven't gotten to this playoffs. We're going to move on. feels like that's the way it kind of goes. Yep. And, yep. and even, uh, I think, depending on what happens this weekend, we can talk about the playoff, matchup, playoff matchups as well. Uh, but uh, even, even then, I think there's some guys, one of them down I-35 from us, that if, if – the Cowboys don't win that first game. I wouldn't be surprised to see a change there as well, even though McCarthy's been fantastic every year that he's been there, basically. Uh, that's not – first-round exits, that's the two-seed home home playoff losses are not going to be <laughs> what Jerry Jones expects. Uh, also, another one to keep an eye on. Do you think Bill Belichick coached his last game for the New England Patriots? I think he's trying to hold on to his job. 
from the reports I saw just before coming on the show here. He's conceding some stuff. Yeah, it said the the headline on ESPN: Belichick still under contract, open to changes. Yeah. Yeah, Ron Rivera fired. Oh, Rivera, yeah. Rivera and Ar- Arthur Smith were the two that were fired so far today on Black Monday in the NFL. We'll talk about the playoff picture. What's your favorite game coming up on Super Wild Card Weekend? And then we'll look back. Do you remember your, who you picked to win all the divisions in the wild cards? Do you? I do. You do? I do. Not a terrible, not a, not not terrible by me. There was I one. I don't remember all the divisions. One, oh, one just awful pick. Because the thing is, last year I wrote all this down and I was horribly wrong. Yeah, and so I, I, I don't want to write it down this year. <laughs> Now, to be reminded how dumb I am. I remember all that, and also Super Bowl pick. Do you remember your Super Bowl pick? Vaguely. Let me go back into the void of my mind see and if see if I can remember that. See if both your teams made the playoffs, and would you change it if you had a chance going into Super Wild Card Weekend? And, of course, we can rehash what happened over the weekend, high school hoops. I, I have a question that, unfortunately, for the local team – we don't need to scour through and get an answer to, but I, I wonder if Hammond and the Lady Warriors had a chance to do something that had never happened. I'll tell you what this that weekend? is. weekend? Yes. Okay. I'll tell you what that is next. 225-9698 is the phone or the text line. That is 225-9698. Give us a call. Shoot us a text. We can talk about any of those things, whatever else might be on your mind. Feel free to try to chime right in at 225-9698. If you're outside the listening area, Stay in touch with us a couple of different ways. Log on to KADSAM.com or download the app. The app's got it all. It's got radio. It's got the Penny News. Big Elk and Paragon TV. Everything that we do right there on the Paragon Communications app. And, of course, Skinny on Sports Podcast is also there as well. You can check out if you miss a show entirely. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Okay, so I've, I've thought about this. Uh, Drive it back from Hinton. Saturday afternoon, early evening, in anticipation of Lomega and Hammond in the finals of the Warrior Classic Mm -hmm. on the girls' side. And my question was this. Do you think, and it hasn't happened, it didn't happen Saturday, because Lomega beat Hammond in the finals on the girls' side 60-52. to Do you think it's ever, or how long had it been, since somebody had beaten Lomega three straight times? That's a good question. That's a great question. <laughs> you might have to go back to the 80s. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's a fantastic question. <laughs> I was asking some different... Lomega and Ceiling don't play rear, do they? Do they play on a regular season? There's them I mean, proximity-wise, they're pretty close, kind of. That's if, a possibility. If that's on there, then I'd. it might be more... Might be ceiling, but no, that's a great question. The Hammond obviously won in the finals of the of the the Warrior Classic a year ago, the state finals, right? And then they had a chance uh, on Saturday, but Lomega was able to win sixty to fifty two, avenging all those losses. Kind of, I don't, I don't know if you ever really avenge a state tournament loss, state finals loss. We'll probably have to take till May, uh, till March for that to maybe mm-hmm. happen. But um, man, what a, it was it's a good one. It was it was a good night. Yeah, Dover. Dover. 2000s. Those those early two thousands were really good teams that Dover had. I wonder if they played La Mega. I don't know. I don't, um, we'll have to go back to the history books on that one. Yeah, it's, I, I just looked it up and I got the text. Ceiling does play La Mega. In the regular season, that's what I thought. So maybe that's that. That I bet might just be somewhere in there. Might be it's the more answer. recent than we think. But Lamega's been a, just as good as. I mean, right there at the top was ceiling. I I, I don't know. But uh, a good it's night tough to do though. Yeah, a good night in Hammond. Uh, yeah. the, the games were really interesting, fun to watch. Um, and, and both Hammond teams, you know, I, I've talked about the Warriors. For a while now, kind of as a, one of those teams that hey, look out, they're they're coming, right? I mean, young boys, yeah, about the, the boys, boys the yeah. boys, young. But uh, Coach Johnston, we've seen him year after year after year at the at the state tournament with Roth. His team's always 
seemed like the moment was never too big for them, even if they weren't able to pull it out. It never, it never felt like they, like there was any panic to them, right? It's just one of those deals where they couldn't, they weren't able to win the game, and that it feels like that's the way they are right now. Um, getting all the way to the finals, giving Sentinel undefeated Sentinel everything they wanted in that final, uh, but Sentinel does win sixty eight sixty five. So the uh, the Bulldogs did what they have to do. Anxious to see what happens in the rankings today after all these tournaments are finished up. Mm-hmm. Hey, you just wonder, uh, what were they, sixth going uh, at, at the last rankings, uh, the Sentinel boys in Class A? Yes, uh, uh, yeah, six. Yeah, six. six. So you wonder, what, you, know, you wonder what they've got to do and if that was enough. Like when when can we say okay they have solidified a top eight spot? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Maybe not just yet. Um, looking ahead, they're over at the West Central, aren't they? Sentinel will be, and they'll have potentially a matchup with Calumet if that works out. I think they're the two seed. Sentinel is Calumet, the one seed. Um, there's Canute third. The, there's the potential of the rematch yeah. with Canute in the semifinals, and Canute took him to overtime. Second game of the year, I believe, for Canute, anyways, and so I think that. But that's not for another. Co- now the last rankings come out. It's after that. It's the Monday after those tournaments. So there you go. So that that might be our answer. You're looking at their schedule. Number ten, Granite, comes up on Friday in Class B, and then maybe two ranked wins or two ranked opponents, at least in the West Central with Canute, and then the possibility of Calumet after that. So. I, I think they're in a really good spot at 16 and 0. They're already garnering. They garnered two first place votes the last time uh, the rankings were, and that's been about a month. I mean, not quite a month, but it's getting close. You know, with all the Christmas breaks and in, in, in the kind of the pause in the rain. So I'm interested to see where they where they settle in Class A and how you know you move up a couple of spots into the top four. You feel pretty pretty comfortable that uh, with only two weeks left to play before the rankings are, are solidified, that you can stay in that top eight. Yeah, back to Hammond, though. Tip of the cap to them. Uh, look at their schedule. Winners of their last – or four of their last five, of course, that loss came on Saturday, gave Sentinel everything they wanted. You know, what might help? What might help Sentinel is Hammond went and beat number nine Class A Texoma. And then people look, well, they beat a, a hot Hammond team in their home gym on a Saturday night. In yep. their tournament, that that doesn't hurt things. But Hammond, man, yeah, that's uh, you know I kind of mentioned, I kind of alluded to it with the Merritt boys with an opportunity for them to kind of turn a corner, and then I kind of changed my tune on Friday or Thursday talking about or what was it Friday talking about Hammond. Well, now maybe it's that they're, they're the team that could turn their season around, taking advantage of hosting this tournament against some good teams, and even in that loss, I think they've proven they're kind of turning their season around they're kind of figuring things out they're very young they can shoot it i'm anxious to see if they can keep this going and and then um and then who knows in the playoffs because i mean you would think with their with the girls being ranked top two top three they're gonna get uh well the i forget the dang playoff thing yeah, keeps changing I up never mind I was going to say they could benefit from their girls uh, being ranked high, but that's not a thing anymore. It's not supposed to be withdrawing of, of the brackets this time. But my, that doesn't take away my point, though, that Hammond is turning a corner. Good job uh, for those young men um, embracing what Coach Johnson has done or bringing to that program in this first year. And, and uh, you know, see what happens with them. It's interesting. And, and look at their schedule, looking ahead. I mean, they'll have a tough test against Sealing, but that is that Hammond. And, uh, going to or playing Duke at the Bi County, and that really beefs up that boys' side of the. We were talking about the girls' side of that Bi County Conference tournament, and, and now the boys' side looks really, really juicy as well, man. That looks really fun. Yeah, you figure they see these things pretty far in advance. I, I wonder if if you seeded it now, <laughs> yeah, if Hammond's not quite as low because you see a Duke there, you know the ceiling boys are there, so you that's. You know they're probably the the eight or the seven, the Hammond boys, probably seed eight or seven, maybe the six seed based on when they seeded it. That's right, because yeah. you, you got we I mean Texoma's there, Duke is there, 
ceiling is there. So somewhere, you know, the one of the last two or three seeds. And now I don't I don't think there's any doubt they're they're playing above probably what that is. But there's also I mean that's going to be an awesome tournament. I can't wait to see that bracket and, and kind of fill it out with the rest uh, of the teams that are going to be there. I'll make sure it's on a out. But yeah. I mean, you're talking about Hammond, you're talking about Sealing, you're talking about Texoma, Duke, Merritt. That's going to be a whale of a bracket uh, once we get to see that. So that that's what happened kind of out there. Uh, Canute lost in the finals to Hooker. Uh, it's a Hooker team that basically just ran through that thing, didn't they? Oh, yeah. Uh, full of athletes and, and depth, right? That, that, that huge team physically and on the bench. It's almost to the point they have to bring in extra chairs and – and full of athletes. It's a, it was, a, it was a tough ask for the Canute boys. Girls lost to Hooker in the semifinals on Friday, and then bounced back, win third over Moreland, forty four thirty four. Merritt Oilerettes in the finals defeat Hooker thirty eight to twenty. I think that's maybe the second straight year that Merritt's won their own tournament, mm-hmm. second or third. The Oilerettes just continue to roll, um, coming off that third place in the Bertha Frank Teague, winning their own tournament, and now. It's starting to look ahead. I, I mean, let's see what they got in between. I know Sayer tomorrow is the opponent for Merritt, uh, but yeah, all eyes start to to glance ahead to see what the by county looks like. That's going to be a lot, a lot. Yeah, of Yeah, I, I was looking for the bracket it wasn't on the website I go to. So, yeah, I'm, I'm anxious to see for both sides, dude. Boys, girls, looks like it could be stacked. Absolutely, Leedy did what Leedy normally does at the Oil Center, which is play for the fi- play for the championship, uh, both girls and boys, on Saturday night. Another fun one. I, anytime you see Arnett and Leedy girls playing, you know it's going to be close. You know it's going to be entertaining, up and down. And Arnett ends up uh, getting the win this time, fifty five fifty one, in the Oil Center Classic Finals. Uh, that game was nineteen nineteen. After the first quarter, Leedy was ahead most of the second, and then Arnett came back in the third quarter, kind of flipped the thing around. Lady Wildcats uh, defeat the Lady Bison 55-51. Then the Bison just rolled through that tournament uh, to come out of the Christmas break. 65-32, a finals win over Balco. So the Bison of Leedy, uh, they they looked, they're kind of another team, a little bit like Sentinel. Winning, you know, maybe not, they, maybe they didn't get some marquee ranked wins in that tournament uh, at Woodward. But uh, trying to trying to solidify their spot in the top eight, and they, they didn't do anything wrong on their end uh, in that regard. Try to do that. Hollis was over at the Slick Hills Invitational down in Apache. The Lady Tigers. Uh oh, I think I wrote this down wrong. Both teams played for third, as they both won the first game. I think they did they win they lost they lost yeah that's big about, I just, yeah i said i knew the score 27 26 but i was thinking i remember big pasture won yeah. i just wrote it down wrong 27 26 big pasture beats them for third and then another tight one for third in the boys van os 52 hollis 50 in the third place game there so that's a that's a pretty good showing on the boys side against the van os team ranked in the top 12 or 13 in 2a 12 yeah yeah so that's yeah. uh that's there down in altus at the cotton belt tournament the Eric Lady Bearcats played in the finals, but they were defeated by Sweetwater. Lady Bulldogs, 47-30 winners no, over. Wait, wait, wait. Say that again. Sweetwater wins the Cotton Belt Invitational on the girls' side over Eric in the finals. Bearcats were defeated in the semifinals by Granite. We talked about that game last week. Uh, and then they turned around and beat Sweetwater 49-39 to win uh, the third place in the boys of that uh, tournament down in Altus. Over at Arapaho, uh, the Arapaho Butler Lady Indians win the consolation championship, fifty-one twenty-one over Cordell. The Arapaho Indians lost in the finals, close one to Southwest Covenant, fifty-five forty-nine. So good showings by uh, by both of those teams, and also Cheyenne Raiden, the Lady Bears win third, sixty-four twenty-nine, uh, as they knock off Southwest Covenant in the third place game. The Bears fell forty-six forty to Ampo. In the third place game, we talked about Hammond, and then that leaves the Elkats and the Big Elks. Uh, a good three days for Elk City Hoops, uh, competitive all the way throughout. Um, the Elkats win the third place game on Saturday afternoon, seventy-two to twenty-nine over Hinton. Uh, they were put there in a loss to the eventual champion, the Riverside Two A Number Three. That was a game that was started out just incredibly slow. The first quarter, I think there was ten fouls on each team. Hmm. 
or end up being, uh, what was it, 28 free throws combined in the first half. Just it was just sloppy, you know what I mean? Choppy, mm-hmm. and, it, and yeah. they, but both teams kind of adjusted, or maybe uh, the the fellas blowing the whistles adjusted. I know Coach Ham was talking, and and the the coach from he said both of them were telling those guys like, listen, we're going to be here all night long if this continues. Like, stop. Yeah. And second half was super entertaining. Uh, both teams got up and down the floor. Uh, the Elkettes actually outscored Riverside in the second half. I think it was thirty five to twenty six. Uh, but they were down down twenty one at halftime. Ended up losing by by twelve there in that semifinal game. But you know when you when you look back at the week for the Elkettes, outside of a, one quarter against Santa Darko on on Tuesday, where they fell behind what nineteen to six or nineteen to four or something like that, then played really well against the number two team in four A for the rest of the evening. Go over, get two wins against Hinton, and then the loss playing another top five team this time in two A with Riverside, who we saw at the state tournament last year, I think even in the semifinals of that girls bracket, if I remember so, right. Yeah. You know, that and they, they bring back that looks like the same team. The names are certainly familiar. And to uh to, to play that way, I, I think the Elkettes uh positive, no doubt, with Weatherford coming to town tomorrow. And then also the Big Elks win the consolation bracket. Second straight year that they did that, second straight year they beat Hinton to do it. Uh, as the Elks Dominated the second half against the Hinton Comets. They went 68-48. So the Big Elks, after a slow start out of the break on Tuesday against Anadarko, took Fort Cobb right down to the wire, had every chance to win that game, and came back and got two wins, one over Clinton, one over Hinton. So a good week for the Brown and White on the basketball floor. And now everybody kind of takes a takes a break. Not, not, not a break, but back to the, the regular grind of a Tuesday and Friday uh, this week. And then – of course, the week after we get right back with the, the second tournament week of January, and then after that, man, it seems like it's no time before it's playoff time. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's um, like we. I mean, here we are already January eighth, and we'll next week we're already halfway through the month. You're right. It just January. I've always said it. It just flies by, and it's like it's uh, shake out January. It's uh, everything is sh- shook out. The rankings and all that and every game before those final rankings come out they they seem like they intensify more and more because of the implications of what a win or loss could do uh and and it's not just in the eyes of the local voter but when you got those guys on the east side of the state the voters on the east side of the state where all they do is just look at the score without watching the game and that that oh well they lost well you didn't see how they lost and so those, and then those tournaments we speak of, the West uh, Central coming up, the Bi County, the the what's the tournament down in Altus that Lady will be in Tri City, Tri City, those two get more important. So this is a fun time of year, really fun time of year. Yeah, and then I can't wait to see the Bi County bracket. Uh, we see the West Central. It's got some good teams, no doubt, as it does always. Tri City always has, or Tri County always has some good teams, and kind of a step up in class for Leedy as far as yeah, the, literally the class. There's more two or maybe even three A schools in that one, and that it brings just a different brand and a different style of uh, of ball that they get to see before you get into the playoffs. And then I, I can't wait to see who all's at Washington. Uh, that, that's where uh, Oak City that, will go. Yeah. To that Washington Invitational, uh, that's uh, I'm I'm ready. I think North Rock Creek is one of those teams uh, that will be there. Washington will be there, and so you're talking about uh, Class Four A's number two, which could have a chance to be number one with Weatherford stumbling at the TOC. We'll see. You know uh, whether or not that that holds that much weight, but I you know when you think about it, you know those two are going to be there, mm-hmm. uh, and so one of the one of the better girls teams in in three A and one of the better boys teams in four A uh, or are two teams that I know to be there, and I can't wait to see how, kind of see how the rest of that bracket fills out. So it's fun stuff. I mean, it's amazing how fast the basketball season seems to go because, you know, you, you limp along there, football, once a week, once a week, once a week, and all of a sudden it's November. And you're like, oh, the, the small schools are playing. Then it's Christmas, and then all of a sudden you look up and you're like, how did we get to the big house already? Why are we here? <laughs> Isn't it? It's it, it just started. Yeah. And then – It'll all be over before you know it in the blink of an eye. But good stuff by all the local teams. I mean, I, th- I think you see quality, that in, and maybe there's not, you know, Merritt girls, Hammond girls, 
I think you could probably put Leedy Boys starting to be in the in that true state tournament slash state title contender list. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sentinel. I mean, I'm just talking about in our in our area yeah. or our network. Yeah. But there's a. T- I think there's more state tournament quality teams than maybe I thought there was going to be to start the year. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There, there's teams that are starting to round into form and that'll that'll have chances. There, there's more. There's more that'll have chances than maybe what I realized when we started the season. So that's uh, and, and a bunch of them are young too. That, that's the cool part. As this might, this year will be fun, great. Let's see what happens. But then once you get into the next year, the year after that, we might really start kind of harkening back to the the 2020 season uh, for our network, where you looked up on Saturday of the state championship Saturday, and there were three of the four three of the four games had teams from our network playing for the gold ball. Right, right. It's always exciting, and I'm I'm anxious to see. Like you said, we we're starting to get a clear picture of of those state tournament contenders. And then there's some that are on the cusp, and this is their opportunity uh, with this final stretch in in, um, in January to not just solid, you know, even the teams that are outside of the eight, you know, that aren't that right on the cusp mm-hmm. of being that. That's what I mean by that is they can still, if they get on a run, then they can get who knows. And then all of a sudden there they are uh, punching their ticket. And there are some of those teams in our network and then out here in Western Oklahoma that are uh, fit that category. So, um it's 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 fun to see. It's fun, like you know, Hammond. I'm not saying their state tournament quality, but can they be? Can they? Those boys continue this this hot streak that they're on. Um, you know, Canute's one of those. It's Canute boys. They just got walloped in a championship game, but they're capable of doing it. Can they make a run here? I mean, they have an opportunity at the West Central to go up against two quality teams. So it's. A lot. It's a lot. It's just like I mean, it's a re- broken record. It's just a lot of fun for us as broadcasters to see this, just to go out and watch this and and um, see how this uh, how this ends up. Yeah, and then you, you you know next after the maybe these rankings today, then you start to look at hmm, who could match up, who could be mm-hmm. in the top eight. You know, the, those two yeah, top eight yeah. teams. Where could they go? And and all that gets pretty interesting. It's going to be different. To, I, I think that's going to be harder to predict until we see kind of how the changes with boys and girls kind of not necessarily being tied to each other. Uh, that's a uh, that's interesting too. That's it really interesting is. too. Yeah. And I think maybe today gives starts to kind of make that come into more focus as well. Question on the text line: uh, Who's won a state title with the worst record ever? Surely someone with a losing record's turned it around the playoffs and won a title. I don't know the answer to that. I don't know about the losing the lo- record part. Right. But I do – we were just talking in the break when I saw that on the text line. So in 2022, just a couple of years ago, that was that championship Saturday that was absolutely epic for the entire four games. You don't get that every year. That year you did. It started with Hydro Weekly and Sealing and the Class A girls – Sealing had a shot to tie, or uh, Hydro Equally had a shot to tie it at the buzzer that didn't go in, and Sealing snapped the back-to-back. Hydro Equally looking for the third in a row, and and Sealing won that one with the same group that's going to be out there yes. uh, this year. They were all sophomores at the time, so you got that one first. The second game was Roth and Glencoe. Roth had a shot to tie it or maybe even win it. You know, the year before was when they they had the, they heaved it from the half line. And it hit the backboard in the rim at the regulation buzzer to win it, and then they lost in the they lost in overtime to Varnum, so they they lost to Glencoe that day, um, and they, they had the coaches' kids hitting the free throws. Remember that? Oh yeah, <laughs> the, the, yeah. for ceiling and for for also uh, uh, Glencoe. So that was the first two. We came back. Lomega Pittsburgh was the Class B girls final. Lomega had a shot to tie it at the buzzer. And I say all that to get to then the last game in the Class A boys, it was like a six-point win, and the team that won was the Tushka Tigers. And Tushka, at the time, and I don't think it happened last year, so I'm going to go ahead and say, I believe they were the third team in in, in the history, maybe the OSSA rankings or whatever it was, but they came into the playoffs unranked, and they lifted the Class A boys gold ball. So they they've got to be one of those teams that would be in the running for that, um, you know, to 
It just that, that just doesn't really happen <laughs> for, for a team yeah. to be outside of the top twenty going into the playoffs and run through and, and win a state title. But Tushka did that two years ago, uh, and so that they they've got to be in that. I can't remember who else was in that list. I know reading at the time, like in Oklahoma, when it happened. And and knowing then, it seemed ah, there was a there was like a boys and a girl one boys and one girls team from back in the day. Uh, but Tushka would be, they would be at least to be in the running uh, for for that as far as maybe the team with, with the worst record that won a state title in in basketball. I don't, uh, I'm just thinking, what year was it when Corn Bible got to the finals and won it over Hammond the girls? I don't know what they were like that year. I, I, everyone just went into that game assuming him and was going to win that game. It pops up on those memories when you're in the in the uh-huh, arena, uh-huh. and it seems like there was like a number beside them. Okay, so they were what ranked, it was. I but, can't tell you. Yeah, but being unranked to go on a run like that is is pretty rare, pretty rare, and that's a good question. Maybe Mark can help us out with that. Shoot him a text. But no, that uh, the Tushka one was that just capped off a fun day. No doubt, fun day of state title games, which I don't know if we'll ever see the likes of again <laughs> with four in a row like that. That was so fun. Oh, here we go. They were the first boys team to go unranked. They're the first boys team in the state of Oklahoma to go into the playoffs unranked and win it all? Yes. That is incredible to say. There hasn't been one ever before Tushka. That kind of makes me dizzy. (laughs) The first one was in 2022. Yep, Tushka accomplished something no other boys team in the state in state history ever had. Win a championship as an unranked team. That's incredible. So there may have been two other girls teams that did. I remember seeing this. I can't believe it's not noted in this in this article. That's incredible. Yeah, they beat Garber in the finals. Well, it just goes to show you, and you never know. And that's the that is always. Uh, kind of my praise for the the playoff system the playoff format for from the ossa in the state of oklahoma where everybody has a shot more or less you don't have to play your way into playoffs in basketball you get a shot they beat five top 10 teams in the last two weeks that's unreal so i guess that'd be two at area and three at state that's unreal Yeah. That's pretty cool, though. That's pretty cool. Yeah, to beat Caddo number four, Rattan number eight. Oh, no, no. Counting regionals. I'm sorry. Which would be the last two weeks. You had, if you count the regionals, then area, then state. Yeah, number four, Caddo in regionals. Number eight, Rattan in the area. Then they beat Rappo Butler, which is number five in the first round of the state tournament that year. Number one defending champ Hydro Weekly in the semifinals and number two Garber in the finals. What a run. Holy cow. Yeah, remember they had the big oh. tall dude with the mullet? The yeah. Dark, the dark the dark haired mullet. Yeah, I remember he went toe to toe with the young man from Yeah, the big strong guy. Garber. Yeah. And uh, uh Ty Dante Chester. Yeah, and and when you look at him warm up, you thought, Oh man, size advantage. There Garber. he is. Garber. There, here he is. He's the one that grabbed the ball, the gold ball. Jeffrey Mackey. Nice. Was his name? Nice. And he had a sweet mullet. Well, most Mackeys do. Uh, there's, uh, let's see. <laughs> there's a picture every April sixth that my sister-in-law puts on Facebook of my wife having a pretty sweet one from back in the day. <laughs> now this team, look, I pulled up their record. They finished twenty-four and eight. They started the year three and two or two and three, actually three and three. Then they end the season one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven in a row. And of course, everything you mentioned right there. 
And that 11 in a row goes back before the playoffs. Yeah. Incredible run. And that's one no one's going to forget for a while. We almost did, but then we were. Remi- we yeah, I was thinking yeah. Rattan, but it was Tushka. Yeah. Green it, and white. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right, let's look at the NFL uh, from week 18. Ha- have you ever seen the play that the Saints ran there at the end? No. And for good reason, right? Because normally if you're in the victory formation, the last thing you're trying to do is run a play. You're trying to just run the clock out. Yeah. Yeah. So it makes total sense why we've never seen that play. But instead, Jameis Winston decides it's touchdown time for Jamal Williams <laughs> in a 41-17 beatdown of the Atlanta Falcons. The game was 17-17 at halftime. And then, obviously, the Saints just poured it on in the second half. Um yeah, that caused some some hard feelings from Arthur Smith, who now is fired. So he probably will move his ire to uh, to that as opposed to getting the score ran up on him. Um, we mentioned the coaches that have been fired, Ron Rivera, Arthur Smith, so far. I think the Belichick thing is going to be fascinating to see just what he and Robert Kraft decide. As you mentioned before we went on there, reading an article, it's Belichick's under contract and maybe even open to some changes, which I would assume would be not necessarily uh, him as far as the head coach. I think that probably comes with Belichick, the GM, more than Belichick, the head coach. Could be what some of those changes that might be made organizationally because, let's be honest, Belichick, the GM, has been awful. The team is devoid of talent compared to a lot of the others, not only in their division but in the AFC and so that, that's that's one to keep an eye on. 24 seasons there. He's he's zeroing in on the all-time wins record held by Don Shula. Is that his motivation to to hang on and, and get all, get those those wins to to pass Shula? I don't I don't know. But I think there may be some some organizations around the league right now that are a little bit disappointed in the news today because it seemed like everything was trending over the last couple of weeks toward Belichick being done as the head coach in New England. And now maybe some, maybe a little bit of a chance that that may not be the case. Pride cometh before the fall is what I see. He, he He's a little pr- proud, and it's kind of nice to see that he's willing to concede some things. But, I mean, if you're talking about if he's really going after a record, could he not go to a – more well-built team to do that but I get it he's been at New England forever with all those titles and I think part of that pride thing I said is him wanting to prove to everybody I was a big reason why we won those titles too not just Tom so with him conceding though that's nice to I mean you don't see that a lot from these hard chiseled guys like like Belichick well I wonder what that means too and and Will he concede more of the play calling to someone else, uh, both offensively, defensively, and, and everything? But there's going to be some dra- need. There needs to be some drastic changes in New England because they're falling way behind in that division, much less than the NFL. And and we'll see what Robert Kraft decides to do. But they're in a tough spot. I mean, do you fire the guy that won all? That was the head coach of all those title teams. Does Belichick want to leave where his where his legend was grown it's a tough spot it's a it's an incredible tough spot but he needs to put the pride thing aside um in my opinion yeah i mean it it does seem like he he's saying all the right things at least this morning in conference calls as far as you know ask if he'd relinquish personnel authority he said i'm for whatever collectively we decide as an organization it's the best thing to help our football team and and quite honestly i i i, I probably believe him he doesn't. He never has seemed like a guy that. I mean, there's got to be ego there. Don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. but he he never has seemed like a guy that. It's. I don't know that he makes it all about him. Now, would he like to, obviously, not be going four and thirteen a couple seasons after Brady's gone? Because then that. The the Belichick Brady argu- argument's kind of over <laughs> in a lot of ways until he does something without Brady. Right. You know, Brady moves on and goes down and wins the Super Bowl with Tampa, and everybody kind of looks back up at at Boston, going, "Yeah, figure this one out." <laughs> so that that may be the part where the pride for him is 
But I, 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 I do think, and it always has seemed to be the case to me, that he puts whatever organizationally is the best thing. Because there's been tons of times where the organization throughout his run has gotten rid of some guys that were pretty dang good, at, even at the time in their careers, shipped them off, and he could easily have thrown a fit about having to coach somebody different. But he always just kind of that was all. That's always been what he says: mm-hmm. is well, it's best for the organizations. That's what we all decided, and da 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 da, and we'll move yeah. on with who we got. Yeah, puts on a good front, if anything, uh, and and if he's worried about his his legacy being tarnished with with having to walk away from this franchise or or whatever it may be. I don't think it's ever going to be outside of breaking the law. I don't think his legacy will be tarn. He's done enough, don't you think? I mean, he's a Hall of Fame coach. He's, he's I just done don't enough. think he I, I I just don't think he thinks like that. Yeah. You know, I I just don't. I and, and most coaches don't. You know, most coaches don't think like that. They think they want to go out on top. They want to go out as a winner. They want to and he's not ready to go out like this. So he's 14 behind 14 wins, 14 wins, 333 versus 347 for Shula. You wouldn't think that would be a season worth. You'd think that'd have to be two seasons worth at a minimum. I don't know. It's, it's, it's certainly something to watch because that's those, those two, those two things, the Patriots and Belichick just kind of seem one. And for that to not be the case would be kind of weird. It was weird when... But it was weird when Brady left. <laughs> it was weird when Jimmy Johnson was the head coach at Miami. I know it wasn't as long as a tenure in yeah, Dallas, no. as, uh, but that he won the titles and you he coined the phrase, how about them Cowboys and all that stuff. It was always, for me as a kid, looking at Johnson on the sidelines in Miami, I thought, man, that's weird. And it will be weird with, if Belichick is roaming the sidelines in L.A., just for example, yeah. But I wonder what I wonder what the the appetite around the league would be for these openings if he's cut loose. Meaning, is is Bill Belichick hmm. completely coveted around the league as a coach? I mean, you know, ten years ago, if this would would have been discussed. And there would be no reason for it, but I'm just saying, if if he wanted to do something else, I think 31 other coach uh, other coaches would have been scared to death that their job was done because their team wanted to try to make a run at Belichick. Right? Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's the case anymore. No, and it doesn't help when when coaches like you know McDaniel down in Miami, who's what barely 40 years old. Mm-hmm. When you got these young up and coming guys that are having success. I just use an example. I'm sure there's others I can't think of. Well, and in, in another so thing that's is, the thing. I mean, that's other when this, with these openings, they're going to be looking for those coordinators, those young coordinators that are innovative that and can offensive. Yes, yes, coaches. Yes. That's the one thing. Not only is Belichick a dinosaur, but he's also a defensive guy, which yes. is kind of out of favor in a lot of places. Right. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that nobody would hire Bill Belichick. That's not what I'm saying. But I don't think the uh, I don't know if there's as many around the league now as there would have been. Plus, he's old. I mean, right? But so in his I'll 70s add, yeah, and I mean, that, uh, that kind of thing. We're we're in our forties, but if you're a younger guy, if you're, say in your your mid twenties, and your team just made a firing today, and then a couple weeks, three weeks later, it's announced that Billichek has been hired to be your head coach. Are you are you going crazy? Happy about it? I think you're happy because of his success. Yeah. As a be like player. when Parcells was hired at Dallas. Kind of so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. In, in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah, I think player-wise you'd be over the moon mm-hmm. because you know you have competence coming in, whereas depending on where you're at, you might not have. But I don't know if that same sentiment goes through fan bases, goes through the, the front offices, because I, I think they're always looking for the next best thing, not kind of that old guy. Right. So – that's uh, it's fascinating to me if that does break up what happens or in, and quite frankly if it does you know the conversation we're going to have to have and, and we'll wait till after today after black monday and there'll be black tuesday and wednesday it happened throughout the week but at, at what point do we start talking about where does lincoln riley get uh interest from yeah i don't i don't <laughs> think he's the college coach people want right now i don't think so i think it's jim harbaugh yeah yeah i think so i think that's the first college coach sure 
I think it's Jim Harbaugh. By yeah. the way, how, did, how in the world did I miss that on our rundown? About oh, today, you know that tonight, game tonight. You know, that game tonight. I didn't realize I until either. I woke up and I got dressed <laughs> and I'm looking at the TV while I'm tying my shoe and I see on the bottom on ESPN, I'm like, oh, that's tonight. <laughs> That's what I might be watching tonight. It literally just hit me. <laughs> it's All right, been a we're busy weekend, to, though, for us. We're <laughs> going to have to take a break. We can talk about the rest of this NFL stuff throughout the week. <laughs> Wrapping up a Monday national title game tonight, Michigan and Washington. It's down in Houston. What It kind of seems like a weird place to have the national title game to me. I love it because it's like 100% neutral for both fan bases. It's a long travel for both of them. So I'm kind of glad, not for the obvious reasons, I'm glad Texas didn't win it because – it would have been pro Texas crowd, right? Did you see the 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 ticket prices plummet? No. Oh, really? A week ago tonight, when the as the gate so as Alabama wins or, or Michigan beats Alabama, at that moment on the secondary market, it was like thirty three hundred dollars per to get in. Yeah, because of course the Horn still had to play Washington, and there was that chance. Like almost immediately after that game was over. That number ticked down to like eleven hundred. Yeah, it just the bottom just fell. So out you could completely. have bought those tickets before the semifinals. Yeah, there was. I wonder there, how many Texas there, there fans stuff snatched, out there. I wonder how many Texas fans snatched them up, and if you can get those on the secondary market at a much cheaper I, I, price. I think that's what happened. Yeah, I think that's exactly. Yeah. And of course, obviously, Michigan fans knowing they're going could bump that up. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the price is whatever somebody's willing to pay, but I. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a tons of Texas fans that have tickets they'd unload for a much cheaper price than what they bought them yeah. for. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at even at halftime of the of the Sugar Bowl when that score was tied at 14. All right, what do you expect to see tonight? Michigan, Washington. Oh, uh, I don't know. Kind of defense versus offense. It, it feels like it feels like you got your your rough and tough, grinded out offense in Michigan, and then you got your high flying offense in Washington. So I think that's that's is the question. Is what defense is better? I kind of lean Michigan's way. Oh uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, but I mean, who knows? I mean, Washington might be able to pick them apart, loosen them up with with the uh, with the pass game and and keep them guessing, keep them on their toes. I expect the first quarter to be kind of high flying, and even Michigan, they're going to want to ground and pound. But I wouldn't be shocked if they come out going a little razzle dazzle and catch Washington maybe creeping into the box a little bit, but. I think the clear fa- – well, not clear favorite, but the edge, slight edge, would be to Michigan. I'd lean Michigan's way. But it wouldn't shock me if Washington wins it. But I, I love the matchup, though. I love the matchup. We don't have a clear favorite like it, it was a Georgia versus fill-in-the-blank <laughs> or Alabama or Clemson. These are two teams that are have been and haven't played for a national title in a long time are going to want to – or they're – Gonna have an incredible drive, so I, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, now that, that I remember that the game's happening, <laughs> so that, to me that is the matchup, right? It's Michigan's defense versus Washington's offense. That's what everybody's going to want to see. That's uh, the headliners in this game. Um, Michael Penix, for those that you know maybe hadn't seen him a ton throughout the season, uh, he was on center stage a week ago tonight against Texas down in New Orleans, and he just lit him up. And he's done that all year long. His receivers are so good. Adunze, Polk, McMillan, down the list. Yeah. Dylan Johnson listening over the kind of been driving a bunch at the end of the week, you know, to, to Hinton and back, listening to a bunch of radio. And and hearing even on Saturday some Washington folks on uh with Matt Meyer. It sounds like he's playing and I would have not guessed that when he was couldn't get off the field at mm. the end there against Texas. It almost ended up costing him the game, but it's some sort of knee injury that he and he has said he feels almost a hundred percent. So that's a huge, huge bolster to to what Washington wants to do. But at the end of the day, no offense to Dylan Johnson, but Washington's not winning this game if they do on the legs of Dylan Johnson. It's going to be on the left arm of Michael Penix. Yeah, absolutely. And so for Michigan, you know, we saw him heat up Alabama immensely throughout that Rose Bowl, sacking uh, Jalen Milrow five or six times. They ended up being six sacks against Milrow in the in the in the run of the game. 
but I don't know if you could do this. I don't know if you could pressure Penix the same way you pressured Jalen Milrow. I think you got to. I think it's got to be a lot more with four because you of contain them a little you, bit. You've got. I, I just. I think you have got to. You've got to be. You got to be able to get home with four. And so, if you can, then you keep the score down, and you know it's twenty eight, twenty one, twenty eight, twenty four, you know twenty four seventeen, something like that. Question is, and it's on the text line right here: Can Michigan on the other side? Can they keep up if this turns into a shootout? Yeah, if they can drag this out, that that favors Michigan and not turn not turn into a shootout. Sure, but there is that stat still. In Kalen DeBoer's tenure at Michigan, at uh, Washington, they have not lost a game in which they have given up less than forty. Mm. So you know that that trend is it's a huge trend on Washington's side of this. Yet also seems to be the way that Michigan needs to play this game in order to have the most the, the, the chance to win. Like if you said if you told me the the winner is forty five thirty eight. I would think Washington wins that game all that game all day long, but history shows, or this part of history of Kalen DeBoer at Washington shows that's the only way you can beat them is by scoring more than forty. And you, you kind of think, oh well, duh, but but think how many times you see teams lose thirty four thirty one, thirty five thirty. You know, mm-hmm. there's there's tons of games that become fairly high scoring that don't reach that forty plateau that you lose. And for him to have that record of not ever losing, that's amazing to me that they've been able to win all of them. Yeah. Every single one of them. On the other side, I, I think for Michigan, obviously Blake Corum is is kind of the guy that starts everything. And the, Texas had a lot of success running the football at Washington. Yeah. A lot of success. And so, you know, you think back, they're rolling down the field right there in the third quarter, and then just a, the the running back, Texas' running back, I think it was blue that time, just hit the knee of his tight end, and the ball flies. You know what I mean? That wasn't necessarily Washington's defense stopping Texas's offense on the ground. So that, to, that's the unit to me that has to play the best in order for Washington to win is the run defense and make J.J. McCarthy beat you. And then at that point, can he? Do you think he can? I do. I do, too. I do, too. Remember that compare? He he has that little swagger about him. And I think if you put the ball in his hands in this big game, so he just kind of makes that. He did it in the Rose Bowl. He made some key completions, you know, it, it, while, while – scrambling so i i like his I, I like his moxie i like his 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 swagger and that you know teams feed off that i like his chances there and that's the key that's the two keys for me are the quarterbacks which is kind of cliche to say right who has the better quarterback whose quarterback is going to play better but if Penix plays really great i mean he could not only win a national title but he hit up his chances of getting drafted very very high and then McCarthy, like you know, if he can play like I just said, then he gives his team a heck of a chance to win a title. So, yeah, I know it's cliche to say that, you know who has the better quarterback, but that might just might be as easy as that. Who who is who who performs better? Yeah, it's 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 a fun matchup, and I like that it's not like you said it's fa- yeah. seems fairly even. There's not just a, a dominant team in this. Both undefeated. So somebody's going to end up fifteen and zero by the time this thing is over uh, tonight. I I think it's a fun game. I think it's a fun game to watch. I, the I don't know the I don't know if, I don't know if either of these two can blow the other one out. No, because I think Michigan's defense is too good to not just get ran out of the building. Even though Washington's offense has that capability. And then on the, I don't know if Michigan's offense is explosive enough to run Washington out of the building. Does that makes sense. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's kind of it's it's a one of those rare matchups where it's like you've got strength on strength, 
and you've kind of got weakness on weakness it, well, for whatever you want to call weakness for the two, well, for Michigan's offense and, and Washington's defense. All right, who wins? I'll say Michigan. A slight edge Michigan. Whether a five and a half favorite. So uh, I'll 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 say they cover that easy. I think it's like a touchdown win with a defensive stand at the end to hold on. Yeah, I'm seeing five and a half. We got a lot of Washington love on the Texas. Well, line. because they don't want Harbaugh to win, right? And I'm with. Well, them. that's another thing. I'm with them. I don't want Harbaugh to win. I don't. I, I don't like the idea of him winning. He's a jerk. I'd love to see Penix win for obvious reasons, what I've been saying all season long. But I think team versus team, Michigan, Michigan, Michigan is all, is just slightly better. And I like good defense. Defense usually wins out. Yeah, and, and it does seem like Michigan is sort of that team of destiny in a lot of in, or, or everything that's happened throughout the season with their coach has really galvanized them to the point of it's hard to see them losing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But at the same time, that's that's the, the cool thing about it is the, mat, the matchup is also a team that seems like they've been able to, to make the biggest play of the game when it absolutely had to be made. Offensively, defensively, they've done it kind of both ways. You know, the, talking about, you know, Dylan Johnson – yeah, I don't think that he's going to be the reason they win if you're Washington. But also, think back to the Pac-12 title game. He was the difference in the Pac-12 title game. His legs and being able to churn out 160 yards, and especially those drives toward the end of the game where Washington was needing to hold on to the ball, melt the clock. Yeah, He was able to do it. Yep. I, th- I'm, I think Michigan's going to win also. I almost picked him preseason. But there was I, I had I had too much faith in Saban. In, hard in to pick. Alabama. It is hard to pick against Saban. It's going to get easier now, I think, as time moves on. But with his national title drought, it's going to be easier. But watch, he's going to pop back next year and win it all. Yeah, I'm not counting. I'm not <laughs> ever counting that guy out. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I, I think Michigan wins. I think it's a good game. I think it's a close game. I think it's a fun game. But I, I think. Everyone's going to go in talking about Penix, but there's just something about J.J. McCarthy in his ability to make just enough plays. And I think that's going to be the difference with his legs, with his arm, whatever, or both sometimes creating the time that it takes to to get out of the pocket and, and find somebody. I, I think that's – I think J.J. McCarthy is going to be the, the difference in this game. Yeah. And Michigan's going to win a very, very close one. Hopefully it's fun. Yeah. Hopefully it's fun. J.J. throws two crucial picks. That could happen. I mean, I mean they, the, that Alabama game started like a, it was almost like a joke. And fortunately for Michigan, Downs' his foot was out of bounds. Or it's like, you just threw it right to him. What are you doing? He's a risk taker. But – He may do some good and some bad. Everybody have a great Monday. You've been listening to the Skinny on Sports podcast with Aaron Cow. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to get alerts of when the latest podcast is available. Thanks for listening. That ball is blistered to right. Way back. Goodbye. Hey, Western Oklahoma schools, listen up. How would you like to win a $5,000 interactive smart display for your school? Thanks to video reality and audio video business in Oklahoma City, you could be awarded one. Here's how. From now through February 28th, anyone can text in one time per day through the entire promotion. The winner will be announced during our live coverage on the ParagonTV.com and Cool 94's coverage of the Saturday, March 2nd Class A and B Basketball Championships. Here's how to participate. The text line number is 580-225-9697. And in the text, simply type Type in the one word name of the school you choose to support. We are so proud to partner with Video Reality that through their gracious gift in this promotion, some lucky school will be awarded a $5,000 interactive smart display. Remember-
Remember, send a text to 580-225-9697. Type in your school's name. It can only be one word. And send it. Limit is one vote per day per phone number. Good luck. Video Reality, your audio, video, and control experts.